So in this video we'll talk about calculating probabilities from a normal distribution, which is not a standard normal distribution. So you already know that if we are dealing with a normal distribution, we have a nice little table you can use to calculate probabilities. But now we will be talking about a problem where we don't have standard normal distribution at hand, but a different one. And you may ask, oh, okay, uh, in a moment you'll see, we'll have one with a mean of 10 and a variance of 16 or a standard deviation of 4. And you may argue, oh, well, can't I just find the respective table for normal distribution with mean 10 and standard deviation 4? That table doesn't exist because there's an infinite number of possible normal distributions. And whatever you do, if you go to any sort of textbooks, you'll always find a table for a standard normal distribution. Or here, good old trusted Woodridge. So that's not going to be a possibility because there is only one table, the standard normal distributional table. So let's look at the problem. We therefore need to find a way to make this table useful. Here it is. This table useful for the problem we have at hand. So here's our problem. We're having a random variable x which is normally distributed but with mean 10 and variance 16. Okay, variance 16, of course, that means that the standard deviation is 4 because that's the square root of the variance. And now we want to know what's the size of this red probability and that red probability is the probability that x is between 0 and 14. So this is what we are after. And as usual you know we're dealing with continuous distributions. It doesn't matter whether you write smaller or smaller than equal. So we do not have a table to go to here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use, and that's what you see down here, a standard normal table, if we could translate this red area in the x distribution into a red area in the z distribution, the standard normal distribution. Because then, if we are dealing with this problem, this one, with this one here, we have a table. Okay, for this one here, we don't have a table. So how can we translate from here to here? And now it's sort of very convenient that indeed we can translate from here to here with the following formula. Z equals X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we divided by sigma. The variance we usually call that sigma squared and the standard deviation we call that sigma. So how would we do that? How for instance would we calculate that value, let's lose zero, into a value in the standard normal distribution. So what we are after is a probability here that z is larger or equal than some value and smaller or equal than another value. So what we need to know is what is that yellow value and then we need to know what is that green value that corresponds to the 14 in the x world. Okay and we want to know what is this value here. So let's all we got to do is we got to apply this formula here. So let's do that with the zero. So the zero takes the role of the x value we are after. So zero minus the mean, the mean here is 10. So zero minus 10 divided by the standard deviation, which is four. Now, what is zero minus 10 divided by four? minus 10 divided by 4 is minus 2.5. And that is what this value is, minus 2.5. And then what about that value here? 
So we are still talking about the same distribution. So the mean is going to be the same and the standard deviation is going to be the same. These are the parameters of the distribution. I mean, so given I have one more useful color here, that is this value and this value here. So these are the parameters from that original distribution. But the new value we are looking to translate is the 14. So 14 minus 10 divided by 4 turns out is 1. Okay, so you almost can think about this like an exchange rate translation from the x, x currency to the z currency. Okay, and all we need is the mean and the standard deviation in the x world, and that allows us to translate any value in the x world into the z world. And that's what we've done here. And that means that this probability here, and this is now important, this probability is the same as this probability. And this is in the set world, we have a table. And we know how to calculate that probability. That is that probability here, that entire area here, sorry, I'm not tracing that particularly well, okay? And that is the probability that Z is smaller or equal to 1 and then minus the probability that Z is smaller or equal to negative 2.5 which is this little bit of probability here okay this one here and these are now two probabilities in the form which we can read off the table smaller of the smaller or equal uh, form. Okay, so that is brilliant. We can go to the standard normal table and from that table, so that is now our little thing here which we can use. And if I go to this table, I'm not going to show this table now, here you can see that this probability is 0.8413. And this probability, so that's this entire black area, and this probability that Z is smaller or equal to negative 2.5 is 0 0.0062. So the result here is 0.8315. Ah, uh, sorry, not for, uh, 51. 8351. That is the size of that red area. Eight three five one. In that little area here, that was the zero point zero zero six two. So it turns out that these values here, negative two point five and one, actually have a sort of very nice meaning, and that follows from how you calculated them here. Let's see, for instance, that value of fourteen. That was to the right of the mean and in fact it was exactly the length of one standard deviation to the right of the mean. Remember the standard deviation was 4. So that z value into which you translated that 14 indicates that in the x world 14 was one standard deviation, one standard deviation to the right of the mean. So what does this indicate, negative 2.5? That indicates that this value of zero, which we used here, was two and a half standard deviations to the left of the mean. Okay, so that's the meaning of these values once you translate them into Z. And now what I'll also show here is now how you can calculate these probabilities if you don't want to use a table with Excel. So here's a little Excel table. I've already, you know, written down what we had to calculate. We were, we were working with a normal distribution with mean 10 and variance 16, and we were after this probability. And we could calculate it with probability x smaller or equal to 14 minus the probability of x 
smaller than zero. However, we didn't do that here before because we didn't have a table. We translated it into this world, into the standard normal world, where that was the probability that set is between negative 2.5 and 1. And then we could calculate that as the probability of set being smaller equal to 1 or smaller than 1 minus the probability that set is smaller than negative 2.5. So let's calculate these two probabilities here. Um, if you want to use Excel, we need to use the appropriate formula and that is norm for normal. And then you can see here a number of choices and you use norm dist. So let's do that, norm.dist. Then the x value, that is the value you're looking for here, probability of set smaller or equal to one. So that's the value you were looking for at the mar in the margins of the table. So that would be one. Then we need the mean and the standard deviation. If we are in the standard normal world, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And then copper, comma, and it asks you, are you after the cumulative distribution? And the answer is yes, we are. Okay, so we are looking in the CDF. That's what these tables get your, their values from. So, and then we need to subtract norm.dist, so the same, but now the probability that set is smaller than negative 2.5. So here we need negative 2.5 comma 0 comma 1 because we're in the standard normal and true because we want the CDF. And we have exactly the same result we got before. Now, when you are using Excel, you actually don't have to translate because you can let Excel do the translation for you. So we could calculate these probabilities directly up here. So how do we do that? We'd say equal to use formula norm dist. Then x smaller equal to 14. So 14 is our x. But now what's the mean? Sorry, the mean was 10 and the standard deviation was 4. And then we again want the cumulative and then minus norm dist. And then zero, mean 10, standard deviation four, and true for the cumulative. We can calculate that, and of course, we get exactly the same value because we did it correctly. But of course, plenty of things that could go wrong here. Whether you work with the printer table or with Excel, is that's fine, that's okay, either way, but we'll expect you expect you to know to be able to do both.